What's going on guys, Darkseam here, bringing you something a little bit different, I haven't really done anything like this, it's a vlog, um, all my videos are really gameplay, and the thing about this is that it's the first time I'm doing this, so bear with me, um, and at the moment I am not uh, near my equipment, so I don't have any gameplay for you guys, and that's still like lack of me uh, really being prepared and bringing things with me when I'm out of town. And at the same time, I am also on a crap sleep schedule, so if you notice that I'm a little bit tired in the eyes, it's because I am tired. But anyways, uh, today I wanted to talk to you guys about HCS and the event coming up, and kind of just give you a little bit of a breakdown for the top 8 teams to look out for. And obviously the top 8 teams are the guys with the top 8 seeded teams. Um, pretty much the teams with the most points. And I'll be talking a little bit about every individual player and giving my opinion on who to look out for team wise and uh, uh, I guess I should say like solo player wise as well. So uh, let's just get right into this. Pretty much I'm going to be starting from the bottom to the top. So at the moment, uh, the top eight teams uh, from bottom to top is Team Excellence, Team Liquid, Optic Halo, Counter Logic Gaming, CLG, Cloud9, Winter Fox, Denial Esports and EG, also known as Evil Geniuses. Now, let's start off with Excellence. Uh, for those who have not really heard about them, uh, b bear with me, I haven't really heard about them either until this most recent land where they land against, it was, I believe, three teams, Excellent, excuse me, Excellence, Winter Fox, as well as Team Liquid. And uh, those teams were surprisingly really good. I knew Winter Fox was going to be a good team to... Uh, land against and surprisingly a really good team even without practice and now that they've had practice and land as well they did really well at this past land um they're pretty much a squad to look out for um but like i said let's go back down to the bottom team excellence consists of kobe also known as kobe swift or kobe's too swift l town frosty and unlegit now these Four players are definitely something to look out for, something that I hadn't really watched, and one of the biggest reasons to look out for them is because they did have a recent land with two of the top eight pro teams, and because of that, they have a lot of practice with a squad of Winter Fox who are very aggressive in their gameplay style, as well as Team Liquid who can be aggressive, but at the same time, Team Liquid can change the pace of the match uh, however they want and kind of just, you know, get you into their own pace and play their game so with team excellence kind of practicing and just really getting into that type of stuff they are a well practiced team and even online scrims as well even during the LAN, they were uh practicing against cloud nine as well as evil geniuses and i believe it was the first day of the LAN when every all the teams were there i saw excellence putting up numbers against evil geniuses they were you know placing pretty well i believe one of the first team slayers matches that i watched was really close i believe it was 48 50 and the only reason they ended up losing was because of you know one misplay or because they didn't see one care uh excuse me one opponent blank them and really uh that was really it it was just a lot of small things and at the top eight teams pro level you'll see a lot of small mistakes that add up and that's kind of the reasons why people lose games or because people don't really um, miss an opportunity to make a play, stuff like that. So Team Excellence is definitely a squad to look out for. Like I said, this is all opinion. I don't really know much about them uh, as individuals. I definitely need to look out for them more and start watching their streams more. And as this team tournament comes up, uh, definitely look out for really good uh, shots coming from L-Town, Frosty, uh, sniper shots especially. And even grenades as well. I, I think that Excellence, as far as utility-wise, they use their grenades pretty differently from any uh, top 8 squad. They use them utility-wise. Of course, they have some slaying power to them, but utility is the most important. And I think that's one of the things that I like about Excellence is that whenever they want to switch the pace, you'll definitely see those grenades coming out as utility. They, they'll really throw them out just to keep the other team off of them and give their uh, own teammates time to get their shields back or even just get away from other people. So like I said, definitely check them out. Um, and number seven coming up is Team Liquid. And Team Liquid is a newly formed team, really good. And I think this is one was, I think, my most surprised squad because the names were up there, but you wouldn't have really seen this combination of players at the top level it was kind of just like out of 
left field, right field, whichever you want to call it. But this uh, squad consists of Ninja, Spartan the Dog, Ares, and Shooter. And Shooter was, uh, I believe he was on Elevate. Elevate was it what he was on. And um, really, I had really no idea anything about uh, Shooter at all. And once I watched the land that was most recent with these three the the three teams it was really kind of an eye opener to a lot of different things you know i had to give myself time to really adjust to the way they played but most recently i've seen them play online i've seen them scrim most recently i believe it was uh cloud 9 and they did really well um i think one of the most important things with them is their chemistry um they're all really good friends outside of the game and because of that in game they really talk to each other and they have conversations with each other so it's not just r random call outs like this guy's top blue this guy's uh you know ring three it's this guy's ring three i'm shooting him or like uh there's one guy one shot ring one and the other will reply ring one dead i killed him or something like that and they'll continue that pace and keep them going and like i said earlier they really push the game into their own pace and they really know when to make plays I think one of the most recent games that I watched was the Cloud9 versus Team Liquid, and it was, uh, I believe it was CTF on Warlord. And uh, the game pretty much started off with Cloud9 getting three caps in a row, and then finally uh, Team Liquid put in one. And the score to win is five, obviously, so uh, Cloud9 gets a fourth cap, and Team Liquid turns it up. They know how to come back from, for games, and they know how to push it hard, and they know how to win games for sure. Um, that game pretty much ended up being a 5-4 win uh, for Team Liquid. A really good comeback. They pretty much consistently capped three flags within, I believe it was, uh, I want to say one to two minutes. I have to go back and check it out. But definitely a squad to look out for, for sure. Uh, they are well practiced as well at the land playing against Wonder Fox. They did really well playing excellence. You know, they learned things here and there because uh, a lot of up-and-coming players have a lot of different things that they can really give other pro professional players and show them, you know, new grenade spots and stuff like that. And that's always, like, uh, fun to really experience uh, with other people. So definitely check out Team Liquid. I mean, they have uh, a lot of shooting power. Uh, I think, excuse me, individually, definitely Spartan. Um, Spartan the dog, I think, would be the most, like, up-and-coming player at the moment. But I would not count out Shooter either because they all shoot really well. Like I said, they have good chemistry and stuff like that. Uh, next up is Optic Halo. Optic Halo is definitely one of those teams who is land-based. They know how to play on land really well. And they all communicate differently from other teams. But they definitely listen to each other. Uh, most recently I watched, I believe it was Maniac Stream. And um, it, it, it really is hard to give players... I guess feedback when they're playing online and they're in different areas. I mean, I do believe three of the the players now live in the same house, so it's a little bit easier for them to set up a schedule to practice and to get on and to play. But at the same time, it's still online. Um, it's a little bit tougher to, like I said, uh, give a real analysis of a team when they're playing online because there's a bunch of different factors uh, like lag, people dropping out of games, um, people's shots not registering until one or two seconds after, and uh, things like that. So when it comes to a very clutch, uh, a very clutch situation where you have to make this play, you have to kill this this the oppo opponent, and you don't because of lag, stuff like that, then the tables turn uh, 180 degrees, and you can't really come back from that. Um, but they do their best. I know that uh, Flamesword has been a captain of pretty much that squad with uh, rotating players here and there for a very, very long time, so he knows how to try and do his best. But at the same time, I believe uh, all those players have capabilities of leading their own team as well. Maniac, definitely. I think Maniac is has always been one of those players to really be underrated and to really uh, make the own plays on his team and to change the pace of the game. So whenever you see something uh, change 180 degrees into the favor of Optic, definitely check out uh, Maniac because he will be putting up numbers, he will be making the plays and stuff like that. And that's all I really know for uh, Optic Halo. And I know he they get flack for playing online and they don't do really well, but 
honestly LAN is where it's at. The, the last event that they were at, I believe it was Iron, Iron Games Atlanta, they uh, created quite an upset. I believe they came third. Um, don't quote me on that, I am not exactly sure. But they upset, they beat some top teams, and it was honestly a pretty interesting matches to watch. So definitely give Optic Halo, uh, do not doubt them, pretty much. Coming up next is Counter Logic Gaming. Now, Counter Logic Gaming consists of uh, pretty much the GOAT of Halo, Ogre 2, Royal 2, Snakebite, and Cloud. And by GOAT, I mean greatest player of all time. Ogre 2, he's been playing since the beginning of everything, and he is placed, I believe he is the most. He's the winningest, winningest is the phrase that they use uh, in Halo. Um, and I don't doubt that this squad can do well, but at the same time, their last event wasn't their greatest. I believe the reason that they ended up not placing well was because they were playing well, but they weren't learning, I, I guess was the way that somebody put it. I remember reading that they were playing as if the game was the same, but they weren't... Uh, individually trying to advance themselves they weren't trying to learn new stuff they were kind of trying to do the same stuff just better and that is good but at the same time if you don't learn how to adapt to your opponent's new strategies and the pace of the game then that can really lose you games um and most recently i've seen them scrim uh they they scrim a lot of different teams so i do believe that they have a little bit of practice. Unfortunately, they don't have land practice, so we'll see how that turns out. Um, Counter Logic Gaming, I don't have much on individual players. I know Cloud has been doing a really good job. First, he was on Denial Esports, and then he switched over to Counter Logic Gaming, and he's been doing pretty well individually for himself on his own squad. So he's kind of that player to make those plays as well, very similar to Maniac, but at the same time with uh, different styles as well. So. The same but different at the same time take it as you will um and next up is cloud nine cloud nine consists of, consists of fear itself hysteria victory x and i got your pistola all players who have been playing for a very long time uh some players uh breaking out in halo during the halo three days uh, others breaking out during halo two days so definitely one of those uh veteran squads that you want to look out for cloud nine uh again is uh, a team who you should not be doubting. Um, all these teams that I've been pretty much talking about are top eight for a reason. And Cloud9 is definitely one of those teams that can turn it up. They can change the pace of the game. They're not extremely aggressive, but uh, they they make the plays for sure. Um, watching them scrim a lot, uh, it's just up to making small mistakes. And really, that's kind of why people want to scrim uh, online and just play against other opponents and other top eight teams so that they can get out all those uh, small small plays that pretty much lose them games or just the small plays that they know that they could have won, but it was online or something like that. Um, definitely a team to look out for individually, def uh, especially Pistola. I believe Pistola was, is pretty much one of the best individual players in the game, even after his injury. So he's just coming back and uh, making his debut, and I believe he's pretty much back where he was at right before his injury to his to his hand so i, I want to say that they'll they'll be putting up numbers they'll be making upsets as well and i i think one of the most interesting uh matches i want to see is cloud nine versus optic halo one for one of the main reasons is that uh these are the two teams that i want to see face off to really see um, each individual player shine and each individual player make those great plays that we see all the time to get those crazy headshots and crazy snipes you know they all have really good shots they all have um interesting plays i guess i should say they they're they're risky but at the same time they're it's it's high risk high reward type of stuff and uh i believe it's in in halo the quote is it's halo anything can happen and with these two teams going up against each other de anything can definitely happen and next up in third place uh, it is Winter Fox. Winter Fox consists of Randa, Ryan Noob, Nated, and Arcanum. Now, I will be the first one to say, who is Randa? And that's kind of the question I've, I've been asking myself since the beginning of H2A, but uh, I know a little bit about him now, kind of just following that squad since they've become Winter Fox and since they've made team changes as well, and they brought on Arcanum. Um, Randa is a player I didn't really understand until I started watching him 
play a little bit more. So I started watching uh, Random Play when they were pretty much doing like pro pro scrims. It was like pro eights, and they were kind of just doing like uh, random picks. So uh, they would pick two random two random captains, and the captains would pick whoever players uh, were pretty much online. And then most recently, I started watching him when he was on Winter Fox, and uh, one of the most interesting things that I learned and by watching Randa stream and how he plays is how well he does uh, with his teammates and how well he communicates with them and how well his teammates communicate with him as well. One of the biggest things that I see is when somebody calls a, another player out, he's the first one to pretty much look and shoot at that opponent and in instantly clean up kills. And he does a really good job of cleaning up kills. I think that's one of the biggest things uh, right uh, now that can lead to small to small bad plays is not cleaning up a kill or looking at a guy for too long because he's pretty much staying alive as best as possible and that's where randa's uh, grenades come in he easily throws uh, what's called as god nades or uh, back in the day is called gb nades game battles nades and uh, these nades are pretty much grenades that he knows that will He'll throw with uh, incre with like 100% to 90% accuracy, and he'll throw and kind of just look the other way because he knows that player is pretty much dead. And at the same time, uh, he isn't afraid to throw grenades freely because he is also a player where you can kind of look at him, he'll throw his two grenades, and he'll immediately go to a spot where there's the nade spawns. Uh, specifically Warlord, he goes by the portals and kind of just camps there, but at the same time on each side of the portal, oops, excuse me, on each side of the portal, if you didn't know, uh, each gr uh, frag grenade is. So you can go to the left side of a portal and right side of a portal and pretty much have two more grenades to throw freely. And of course the plasma grenades as well. Um, Randa is definitely one of those players who I believe inherited um, or is very similar, I guess I should say, to the excellent squad where they use their grenades for utility. And Randa is definitely one of those players who uses them like their candy. And that that's using them in a good way. Uh, so as far as individual play on land, Randa I think can do well. Um, I know that he's a new up and coming pro player whose uh, first experience was season one, um, but I believe I believe it was at the beginning of season two actually. Um, so the, his first event, his first live LAN event was season two. So after having that first event under his belt, I think he'll come out doing a little bit better, having less nerves, stuff like that. And of course, with his teammates Ryan Noob, Nated Nated is pretty much the best. Uh, overall player uh, at all times pretty much playing objective playing slayer playing whatever the team needs at the moment he knows how to win games he knows how to cap flags he knows how to plant bombs he knows how to do pretty much everything he's been playing since the beginning as well you know uh, and he's he's hungry he is one of those players who's ready to win the entire series the entire uh, season two of uh, the HCS championships uh, and Arcan Ar excuse me Arcanum as well he knows how to shoot I think this whole squad really, um, like I said earlier, they play really well even when they're not practiced. They know how to win games, and I think uh, being well practiced, I think they can compete. And I believe their third place uh, placing is well deserved. Uh, I believe that this squad, if they had formed earlier, could have a little bit more ATS points and maybe possibly be in second place instead of denial. But definitely. Uh, a squad to look out for and one of my favorite personally uh teams to look out for um but at the same time uh it'll really depend how well they all play individually and i think that is one of the biggest things to take away from all these teams playing is uh individual play and how that individual play uh really merges into team play and i guess I guess really uh, what I'm most looking forward to is how well the team play can come from one squad, uh, from one team versus another team's. Because at the end of the day, uh, the better communication, the better teamwork ends up uh, winning games. So if you make a good play, but one teammate uh, it doesn't capitalize on that or doesn't really realize what's going on, then that can kind of be a downfall. So you all want to be on the same page, make sure you all know what you're doing and really just 
like I said, communicate teamwork that I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, but coming up next, Denial Esports. Denial Esports has been one of those squads that was kind of on the back burner. They were the underdogs in season one, and once they made some team roster changes uh, in season two, they were definitely still the squad to look out for. Uh, a team that consists of Chig, Mikwin, Hines, and APG. Now, all these players, they all make the plays. They all know when to push. They all communicate with each other. They all know how to throw grenades. They all know how to shoot. They all know how to shoot a sniper rifle and pretty much everything. Everything and anything they can do. APG has, uh, I want to say, one of the best battle rifle shots in the game. Hines, he does a really well job. I think uh, it was APG who... Quote, who uh, they quoted saying this, but he pretty much just said that Richie Hines uh, just makes the game easier. Uh, Hines is one of those players who's an objective player, but at the same time, you'll see him uh, uh, pretty much getting kills and racking up all those points within certain games. He can he can slay, he can do objective. Uh, definitely one of those players who's similar to Nated, but with a different style. He isn't as aggressive. Um, he uses his teammates a lot more. He uses callouts a lot more, so he's passive. But like I said, they all know how to make plays, so they all know how to get aggressive, and they all know how to back down. They know how to change the pace of the game, and like I said, they all know how to shoot. Uh, they all know how to throw grenades, place grenades, stuff like that. I mean, uh, I think one of the scariest on this squad is definitely Mikwin. Mikwin is one of those players who's uh, definitely on the top. Um, he's the one who to look out for when he's uh, when he has a sniper in, your, in his hands. He can easily make those impossible sniper shots possible um with like the flick of his thumb it is insane to watch him play even online and sometimes he even surprises himself so that's kind of the player that he is he's very uh i guess the best way to say it is twitchy but at the same time he he isn't as twitchy as some of the other uh, excuse me some of the other players and um in h2 anniversary uh, the gameplay is usually slow but um, if it's on a small map like Warlord, Warlord it's obviously going to be fast paced. But if it is a, a big, bigger map, something like Shrine, they know how to push the the pace of the game. They know how to make plays, like I said. Um, and uh, one of the the players to definitely look out for and to not forget about is Chig for sure. Chig is kind of similar with uh, in Hines that he makes those plays. He's more of an objective based player, so he'll go for the uh, flag touch. He'll go for the last second bomb arm he will pretty much just play with whoever is near him and do the best he can to uh keep his teammates alive to pretty much use his teammates as utility as well bait his teammates to uh finish off kills and definitely one of those players that i know i could be watching a lot more of and learning more from um but definitely one of those players i need to look into more and really uh, i can't say much more because i haven't really watched him that much or for that long and last but not least, Evil Geniuses, the squad to look out for the most, the unbeatable four. This is pretty much the AKA God Squad. Evil Geniuses consists of Snipe Down, Lunchbox, Roy, and Lethal. Now, all these players individually play well, but I think the, the biggest thing is that Lunchbox and Roy are twin brothers. They beat off each other very well they've been playing the game since the very beginning together so they've had that team chemistry for a very long time and they've consistently teamed with each other and been on top teams they have won so many different uh events in different game types and coming into h2a anniversary or excuse me halo 2 anniversary is no different they know how to make the plays uh lunchbox is one of those players who can do it all as well but there's something different. I can't really put my finger on it, but he can pretty much do everything and anything at the best possible. There's always a, that person who's a trick of trades, a uh, master of none, but Lunchbox is a master of pretty much everything, and it's really hard to, um, uh, I guess, look at his gameplay and understand it, because a lot of the times he's just doing it all for the team and uh, doing it all for, you know, his his duo, his uh, his brother, but at the same time, he also makes the plays uh, individually, and that's one of the weird things is he'll push and he'll get aggressive uh, at the correct times, and he'll take out one player, and there will be a second player near him, but he somehow stays alive, manages to stay alive, 
um, puts one or two shots into the opponent and waits for his team to clean up, clean that person up. And he's a really, uh, really good shot. Surprisingly, he understands uh, fire firefight situations. I think the best in the game. He knows when to back down. He knows when to push. He knows when to, when to make the plays. But at the same time, he knows that if he's going to die, he's going to at least take one person with him or shoot as many opponents as he can and get them all either uh, one shot or pretty much just you know do make the best plays as he can. And he always does that with every single spawn that he gets in the game. He never really makes a, a shitty excuse me a bad play. <laughs> Uh, unless um, something is is awry, you know, something like uh, uh, something online is really where I see them play, and they're definitely one of those squads like Wonder Fox that they can play very well even when they're not as practice. And of course, Snipe Down, uh, one of the best snipers in the game, uh, one of the best slayers in the game. He has the greatest positioning in the in, in the game at the moment. He knows where to go, how to flank their opponents, and how to stay alive doing it. So he can easily. Uh, I think one of the one of the most recent videos that he made was the. Uh, uh, I believe he was playing on Shrine and he was pretty much picking off people off um, ring three with a sniper on their rock spawn. And what he was doing is pretty much putting himself in an, in a position on ring three where the opponents could only see the top of his head. So if he was getting shot, he was just uh, back off and the wall ring three. He would use for his defense and that's one of the things that people don't really do in halo is they'll use things like pillars that are right in front of them or rocks that are in front of them and crouch behind them but what he does is he uses the vertical advantage to pretty much uh snipe off and pick off players as best as he can and pretty much just backs off and has the ring as his whole defense defense protection and uh, really i had never really thought about or really uh seen the ring three as this uh, defensive position, but at the same time, it's a very offensive. It, you know, you can stay alive in ring three, and you can pick people off ring three. And I think that's one of the very interesting power positions uh, in the game on the map shrine. Um, and there's no doubt in my mind that this squad will be going to the finals. Um, but I also want to say that um, it is possible to beat them. They have they have lost some online cups. Sure, they've won the majority of them, and um, they don't practice as much as other teams do, but it's because they have this confidence that they're okay with losing online scrims because uh, they know that they can play better when they're all together. And of course, coaches is a big thing as well. Uh, Coach Towie, uh, he does the best at communicating and telling his players what to do. Um, I think he, I somebody put it best saying that he was pretty much the best fifth uh member on that team because he would essentially uh see where all the players were on the map and tell them hey you go go do this or hey you need to grab the flag and push it this way and the, the players without a doubt in their mind with 100 percent trust in their coach would essentially make that play and really listen to everybody and i think i think this is one of the biggest things that i've recently learned is Communi communication is key. You need to b make the best of your call-outs, have conversations with your teammates, make sure you're all on the same page. But at the same time, um, during those conversations, you also have to multitask and be able to listen to call-outs. Um, and I think this this is what they do best. They they make the call-outs uh, at, while at the same time they're listening to their, uh, their teammates' call-outs. And this is really one of those teams that, uh, because they're at the top level, I kind of really don't watch them because I think, okay, well, these guys are the top team to beat. Um, I'm going to watch the other team and see how they play against them. So I haven't really actually watched a lot of their scrims. Uh, just some random matchmaking here and there from individual players, but definitely something that I, I need to watch a lot more of. And definitely one of those teams who I want to watch on LAN and, and see how well they play and see how well they shoot. And overall, I think... Um, this next event, in my opinion, um, will be a good one. It is in PGL Indianapolis this weekend. And I think, to be honest, I, I want to say I, it, it has to be the, the top three that are going to be in the finals. I want to say Winter Fox will definitely be pushing it uh, this time around. They have that land practice under their belt. 
they know what to do but don't forget about these other teams and this is really hard to um, predict because uh, like i said earlier this is halo anything can happen any upsets can happen um, these teams can get knocked out uh, by whoever um, but i want to say i want to say optic halo will make a great run this this event but at the same time i want to say that winter fox will be able to defend their their top three uh position and go to the finals and i think that the 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 game to watch really is going to be the the game between denial versus winter fox and if that happens um that will be a great series and definitely one to watch um and really it's going to be all up to evil geniuses to really just keep their top spot and wait for somebody who to meet them at the end and that's kind of one of those things is uh they really are the top players uh and the top team at the moment uh they have not lost an event this uh this season at least not a LAN event and there's only been one LAN event LAN event so i think overall it's going to be a great event i think like I said, Winter Fox will make a, a a run to the finals. They will most definitely be in the semifinals. Um, and overall, I think Optic Halo will create some upsets. Uh, I think they're definitely one team to look out for. Excellence, uh, I think they are a great team. They have practiced against uh, top pros as well. Um, I think they will create some upsets as well. I feel like they can beat uh, CLG. They definitely played well against Evil Geniuses and some online scrims. Um, all of it was was small little mistakes that added up over the course of the game, and really they all that that's all they really need to get get uh, down is to just buckle down on uh, making good plays and not getting too nervous uh, when you're at a land because at a land the nerves can get the best of you and a lot of the, a lot of the times it's because it's you know new players uh, experience you know they haven't really uh, gotten used to being around their opponents next to each other or across from each other stuff like that but at the same time it's all in good fun it is going to be a great event i think um it will be one to remember and i hope that these teams make some great series some great comebacks and uh uh give i'm hoping somebody will give evil geniuses a run for their money i mean that's definitely one thing that uh all these supporters for all these top eight teams want to watch and really what they want to see honestly if evil geniuses ends up winning this uh, event uh, i think the finals will be will be will be even very interesting because if evil geniuses ends up losing this next event they will be practicing and buckling down as best as possible for the finals because you know that the this team the season one finals they pretty much ended up winning that no problem i mean it was it was a good a good series but at the same time um i think uh if they're not playing at their best if uh one player makes one bad play um that will be at the end of it uh at least for a few games i mean evil geniuses has that comeback power as well so definitely something to see if they end up getting put in losers bracket for some crazy reason um, I definitely see Evil Geniuses making a, a, a run to finals and meeting whoever knocked them out uh, in the finals. So, like I said, uh, keep an eye out on all these top eight teams and all these individual players. They have pretty much the best uh, players in the world pretty much playing for Halo. And uh, hopefully I, uh, we can see some EU teams coming into the mix as well. I want to see some more players break into the top eight and uh, really make things... Uh, crazy and like i said that's the top eight teams uh i'm sorry if i didn't talk talk about uh some other teams uh, it's just that my knowledge is limited and i really just stick to the top eight teams because this is the only time i have for watching them but like i said this is something new for me kind of just trying to get out there and diversify my uh content creation but like i said this weekend will be awesome this weekend will be fun june 26th through the 28th pgl indianapolis i am pretty sure it will be streamed on twitch.tv slash halo and you can watch the games there uh hopefully 
uh, this event is an awesome one. Hopefully the uh, production is good and they don't have too much downtime so they can keep running game after game after game after series after series and stuff like that. And uh, like, like I said, I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Peace.